Hello, I'm Brad Simpson with Simpson Limited Collector Firearms, and today I would like to show a couple examples of the earliest uh, guns designed for use in aircraft and airships, and talk a little bit about how these were developed, why they were developed, and how guns in aircraft evolved in the leading up to World War I. The first military planes, several years before World War I, were single seat planes. They didn't have any mounted guns at all. And really the only thing that the pilot could do was either fire a pistol with one hand while trying to fly the plane with another hand, or they threw bombs out uh, by hand that they, they kept in the cockpit. And there was really very little weaponry uh, associated with the very early planes. The planes evolved to where there were two open cockpits and the guy in the back could actually have some kind of a weapon. And, uh, you know, they wanted the largest caliber they could have, so, and they wanted automatics, semi-automatics, so that they weren't reloading and messing with ammo. And uh, they also wanted them short enough so that they could get in and out of the cockpit easy, you know, pull them out, be able to shoot, maneuver. So, uh, semi-automatic carbines of the maximum caliber they could, they could get with as much ammo as they could get uh, were designed for this purpose. Now later we know that uh, uh, the machine guns in World War I were set so that the pilot could, could see what he was shooting at and they shot straight ahead of him and he was in the line of sight. And of course the problem with that was there was a propeller in front of him also. So they had to connect a chain to the propeller so that the gun was synchronized and it would shoot between the propellers uh, rather than shoot the propeller off the plane. The first example I have here is the Mauser self-loading aircraft carbine. As you can see, large magazine, it's um, 8 by 57 caliber, and it's short so that you can pull it in and out of a cockpit easily. And of course, the guy uh, in the second seat in the back of the plane would have one of these and be able to shoot at planes, you know, above, below, beside, as opposed to the pilot who, if he did have a mounted machine gun, he could only fire forward. This is a Mondragon self-loading aircraft carbine, which was designed by Manuel Mondragon in Mexico, who was a general in the Mexican Army. Obviously, he wanted a larger caliber automatic rifle, and uh, Mexico did not have the means to produce these. They didn't have the arms industry with the technology necessary, so he designed the gun. And it was actually built by SIG in Switzerland to his specifications. And then they started getting initial samples back and the gun turned out to be not super reliable and uh, very finicky with ammo. So the Mexicans rejected the contract and they had already built about a thousand guns. And they ended up in World War I, the Germans bought the guns and modified them. They, they upped the caliber from seven to eight millimeter. And they also added a large capacity drum, which was made by the Germans, specifically for aircraft use. You can see it's nice and short, so it's easy to pull in and out of a cockpit. And with the, with the extra drum, you've got many more shots. And it's interesting, this gun was still unreliable enough that they issued two to each person that got one because they figured it was very likely that one of them would fail, so they had one as a backup in the plane. Another use for these guns was in airships, which is kind of ironic because to think that if you had a rifle like this and you were sitting below a giant balloon of hydrogen, uh, you, you are going to have to hit a very small target, but your opponent has a very big target. And if they hit the hard hydrogen and cause a spark uh, off a girder or they actually
actually have some kind of uh, tracer incendiary round, you're going to be done. So I would, I would hate to be in the position of trying to defend a hydrogen airship with one of these rifles. So as you can see, these are two of the earliest examples of firearms that were made specifically for use in military aircraft. And these happen to be very rare examples. They're in nice original condition and are almost impossible to find today. And original examples in this condition like this sell in the tens of thousands of dollars and they're very sought after. If you have any questions or ideas for a video, send me an email at brad at simpsonltd.com. Thank you.